Good morning. Welcome to church. Um, before we get started, is there any that um, anyone that we need to uh, add to the prayer list? Bruce. Uh, my friend Alice. Alice? I put my nephew Dan on the shooter because he, he was in, him and his wife were in Europe vacationing and he had to fly back home. He was sick before he went, but he went anyway. And he um, had to come back and now he's at the VA hospital in the States. Oh. Okay. Sure, sure. Um, is there any others? If not, then... Oh, sorry, Dorothy. Any others? If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we come to you thanking you for everything that you've done for us, the week that you've put before us. You've taken care of all our needs, and we thank you for that. We thank you for all you've done in um, the path that you've led us down, taking care of those that have come upon us, through the word, through whatever, the light that we've shined on you, of you. And we thank you for just the protection you've given unto us. And then of most of all, we thank you, Lord, for Christ, who died on the cross and paid for our sins. Lord, we ask you that you be with the, those here, um, with the Lynn family, as they go through uh, with their lives, knowing it's tough for them. We also, Lord, ask for uh, just the medical help that you, that you just be there with Dorothy in her shoulder, Alice in her heart, and with Dan um, at the VA with, with whatever sickness he has there, that, that you're able to uh, just bring them back to full health and take care of them. And for all those that just personal reasons, there's so many that um, just personally need help, that just leaning on you, we know it'll bring us through. And we thank you for just being there for us, knowing that if we come to you, that the peace and joy that you've given unto us, that we will survive. And we thank you for that. And for those that are either traveling or are um, sick, or any of those that we've forgotten, that you just be there for them and take care of them and take care of us. And thank you, Lord, for um, your son. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So the first song we'll sing, is it Solid Rock? Yes. Um, page 92, Solid Rock.
Okay, for announcements today, we have communion at the end of service today. And with that, I guess that's all I have. Is there any, Rachel? Next weekend, this coming weekend. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yep, there's a bunch downstairs. We have um, a big box of burger, yes. frozen burgers. Yeah. We've got fries. We've got, yeah, pepperoni, cheese. Lots of pizza crusts. Yeah. So, and it sounds like it'll be about ten thousand. Okay. At right now, for right now. So, and then it's not like it's going to be yeah. too much. We already went in this week. Quite a bit. There'll be a few. There'll be a few. So, and then sure. it'll be housing bills that Dad promised to come. Sure. Because you know, it is summer and it's yeah, busy. Busy, exactly. Okay. So next weekend, okay. All right, is there anything else? Yeah. We're, we may have a different app here that we can just, um, coming up. So that, um, looking into. So with that then, uh, if there's no other announcements, I can't think of anything else going on. So with that then, um, let's move to the next song, In the Garden, page 588.
Next song we'll sing is Oh That Will Be Glory, page 132. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I know that one song. No, the one. Mom song? Yes. Oh, mom song. through prayer and through announcements. Um, so then we'll do the last song before the message. Kind of threw everything off. Uh, page uh, 407. Lead me to Calvary.
we said after communion, or after the service today, we'll have communion. <clears throat> we finished up with Romans last week, so um, just uh, going through. Um, my thought was to start into John. If anybody else has anything else, you know, just drop a note in the offering or to me or whatever, text me whatever, and let me know if there's something that uh, that we want to uh, approach or get into. But right now, we'll just start off with John, and we'll go for a ways here. And, I, you know, with John, it starts out with him and his... Who he is and and um, and in how it goes on through. So we'll start with uh, the Gospel of John, chapter one, <clears throat> and it says there, chapter one, verse one. It says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God." And we talk about it. The, that what he is talking there, that the word is the Bible, is God's spoken words. It's, it's the Bible. But not only that, it's also um, Christ. The word is Christ. That's the foundation of belief, the faith. God's was, it was with God, and it was God. And the word being Christ, and the Bible being, Bible being the word, and the word being Christ. Verse 2, it says, the same was in the beginning with God, and Christ is always there. As long as God has been, Christ has been, and so has the Holy Spirit. Verse 3, it says, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And it's God the Trinity, the three, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And it was all made by them. It is one. And it was made if it was not made by him, it was not made at all. What man can put together is a combination of what God has made. There's nothing that has never been made when God made it. It's a combination of what God made. God said, let there be earth, and there was earth. <clears throat> Verse 4, it says, in him was life. And the life was the light of man. And it's a predecessor to salvation. In him was the life. And the light, um, and the life was the light of man. Talking of Christ on the cross. Man has only everlasting life. Because he has um, Christ. And he has the light, which is Christ. Once you believe, you will uh, have the light. Verse 5, and it says, And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness uh, comprehended it not. The darkness here is the evil. And that's what we are as believers on the earth, because this is the earth, is, is Satan's world. This is not our world as believers. This is not God's world. This is Satan's world, and this is the darkness. And as a believer, we are the light in the darkness. And evil can't comprehend what we are. Verse 6, it says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. And it's not of John that they believe, it is of Christ. 
God sent John onto the world to um, talk of, of Christ's coming, of the Savior that will be coming, the Messiah that is to come. Verse 8, it says, He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. So he wasn't Christ, but he was sent to bear witness or to foretell of the light, foretell of Christ's coming, foretell of what Christ would do, the Savior that Christ would be. Verse 9, it says, That was the true light, which lighteth every man that hath cometh into the world, and of Christ. Verse 10, it says, He was in the world, and the world made by him, and the world knew him not. Christ come unto the world that he had made, him and God had made, you know, they're one and the same. But he, they did, the world did not knew, know him. And that was why John went first, and the prophets before, God told people of the becoming Messiah, Christ. But when he came, they didn't know him. They didn't know he was the Messiah. Even though they were foretold, they did not know him. Verse 11, it says, He came unto his own. And his own received him not. He went under the Israelites. And remember, way back, God said, the seed will come through your lineage. And that was the start of the Israelite nation was Abraham. But when uh, Christ went unto them, they said, no, you're not part of our family. Or we don't believe what you are. So they, they cast him away. They, they ultimately were those that put him to death. Verse 12, it says, But as many as received him, to, give them, uh, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And that meant those that had faith in him coming before that's why it says them that believe on his name. They didn't know the action that was coming, but they knew that he would be the Savior. And that's why it said there, as many as received him, the many that knew what he did. And it says there, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Meaning that we became, we become part of the body of Christ. As believers, we are now in the inner family of God. Verse 13, it says, Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Christ was not born of the will of man. He was not of the sin. He was born of God. And, and when he died, he passed on that to us. The Holy Spirit. That was when some people reference it is to being born again. But it was to be born into the family of God. The Holy Spirit came upon you and, and uh, you became the family of God. Verse 14, and it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And they're talking of Christ. He's talking of Christ. And the whole, whole uh, last five, 
seven verses is talking of Christ. Verse 15, it says, John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spoke. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. John is giving before was prophesizing the coming of the Messiah. And when he came, he said, here, here he is. This is who I spoke of. This is the Messiah. This is our Savior. Um, and he that cometh after me is preferred before me. Full of grace, uh, or excuse me, for he was before me, knowing that he was with God before. And then he came to the earth. But he is in front for us. It's a, it's a way of John saying, listen, he is ahead of me but I follow him. <clears throat> Verse 16, and it says, And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. And grace being unmerited favor. His fullness of all we received, meaning that all sin was paid for. When he died on the cross, all sin was paid for. And that's why the, it says, his fulfillness, his fullness, have all we received. It's a, it's a door to everyone. It's here for everyone. But not of all have taken it. And then he says, and grace for grace, unmerited favor for an unmerited favor. He is giving the gift of God, love, his death, his burial, his resurrection for us. Verse 17, it says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. We talked about that in Romans, how Paul was talking about, you know, Moses was given the law to show that we are sinners, and that's what God's plan had been from the beginning. His plan was, okay, listen, you are not perfect. I'm going to show you you're not perfect, but to get into my perfect heaven, you need to be perfect, but here is I will give you my son. He will pay for your sins so you may enter into my perfect heaven. And all you have to do is believe what he did on the cross. And that's why it says the law was given unto Moses. But grace and truth came by Christ, by Jesus Christ. 18, no man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Nobody has ever seen on earth, walked earth, has seen God. But those that had seen Christ, seen him. Verse 19, and it says, And this is the record of John when the Jewish sent the priests. Now John was going through, through um, he was going through Israel and he was preaching God, and he, or he was preaching Christ. He was coming. The Savior is coming. Here's what you need to do. You need to put your faith in what he's going to do. And he has been born, he is here, he is going to save us from our sins. And this is what God has said. 
And they caught word of this in, in uh, the Jewish hierarchy, caught word of this. And so they sent down priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? To finish um, verse 19. They asked him, who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. So that's what they were going after him for was, well, you're saying this, so are you the one? Are you the one that will save us? Are you claiming to be the one? And he said, no, I am not. I am not Christ. I am not the Christ. Verse 21, and it says, And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. He predecessed Christ's coming, and he gave the word, but he wasn't the prophet or of the Old Testament. He wasn't coming forward as they were. And they were trying to pin him down on who he was. Verse 22, and it says, Then they said unto him, Who art thou? That they may give an answer to them that sent him. Why, is, why sayest thou of thyself? He's, uh, okay, so you're, if you're saying you're not the Christ, you're not a prophet, who are you? Who should we tell everybody you are? And verse 23, he says, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Isn't that kind of a, what do you want to call it? It's a... Uh, you want to call it a metaphor for all of us. Before we were saved, we were crying in the wilderness. Lord, help us. How am I going to get through this? And he says, I am the voice of the one in the, uh, crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as saith the prophet says. He said, listen, I'm telling you the same thing that the prophets in the Old Testament told you. That the Lord maketh a way, and the way is Christ. Verse 24, and it says, And they which were sent of the Pharisees. And they asked him, and said unto him, Why baptize, baptize Thou then, if thou be not the Christ, that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you who ye not, uh, know not. He it is who cometh after me is preferred before me, whose shoes, um, whose shoes, uh, latch it, I am not worthy to loosen, unloosen. And he just goes through, he says, this is, and, and we know that's what baptism is, is an outward showing of an inward feeling, or inward understanding. Baptism is actually the body representing Christ dying, going under the water, being buried, and then being rose. And that's what Paul is, or excuse me, John is showing that there is one coming that I'm not worthy of, but I am showing the action of what he will do for us. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. Just as simple as that. 28, it says, these things were done in um, Betharaba, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. They went out to him to find out who he was, why he was there, 
and what permission he was doing this for. What was the mission? And he says, listen, I'm just, I'm just somebody who believes in the coming Messiah, and I know this is what he's going to do. His death, his burial, his resurrection will cleanse us all of our sin, will pay for our sin. In God's eyes, all sin will be paid for for us when we believe in this Messiah. Verse 29, it says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Can you imagine being standing in that square, watching John, or listening to John, and off in the distance he sees Christ coming. And he sends up, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And then 30, it says, This is he whom I said. He's telling, look, this is the person I have been talking about, and this is the person I've demonstrated about. This is the Savior. After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Saying Christ was in heaven at the beginning with God. He made everything. He did everything. And now he's preferred over me because he will save me. And I will get his righteousness and be able to go into God's perfect heaven. Verse 31, and it says, And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I, uh, therefore am I come baptizing with water. He said, I didn't know him beforehand, but now I do. And I, when I found out what he, who he was, I came forth. And in his way, it was a way of um, a way of showing, a way of, and I hate to say it, of, of works for Christ. He wanted to get the word out, his way of telling the gospel. That's why it says at the beginning, it says, and then I knew him not but that he should be made manifest. I didn't know exactly who the person was, but I know what he was to do. And is it something he didn't know him, but when he seen him, he said, there is the person. This is the one. He'd never met Christ before, but as soon as he seen him, he knew who he was. Verse 32, and it says, And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And that's how he knew. He knew him not before that, but he'd seen the angel um, descend upon him, or the Spirit descend upon him, the Holy Spirit descend upon him. And he, at that instant, he knew. He knew who Christ was. And then the comparison, he said, I baptize with water. But as a believer, we're baptized with the Holy Ghost. 34. And I saw, and I bear record, that this is the Son of God. He knew 
from the prophets, he knew that a Messiah was coming. He didn't know individually who he was. He, it could have been anybody in the crowd. He just knew he was coming. He didn't know when, but he knew Christ would be coming. And when Christ walked where he could see him, he seen the Holy Spirit descend down, and right away, John recognized. And he shouted out to the people, there he is. There is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. He is the one that will save us from our sins. And that was the record that brought him forth. When Christ became a man and started his ministry, going to, um, when he was going on his way to the cross, that's the point where he was recognized. When John the Baptist recognized him in the crowd as he came, and John pointed him out. I think that was the first account of John pointing him out to other than the Israelites, the Pharisees and Levites, to the Pharisees. And with that, we will hold up there for this week. We have um, communion. And with communion, if you want to join in, we, do, we, uh, we go through, uh, through the um, Bible and how he talks of it there. And it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verse 23. And it starts there, it says, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto him, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, Mike, will you give thanks for us? Dear Father, we thank you for the blessing you've given us your son to die on the cross for our sins. And what all our sins do for what you've done for us on the cross. And he was in a great day when he knew who he was. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. He break it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same all manner also he took the cup. And after the same manner, uh, same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup 
is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Let's bow in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the gift that you've given unto us, the grace, your son, whose death on the cross, his blood was shed to, uh, to pay for our sin, his burial, and his resurrection, overcoming death, to show that all sin has been paid for. And we thank you, Lord, for that. And that all we have to do is believe as the sharing of the bread and the cup, that we are um, just partakers in his grace, in your grace, in your love. And we thank you, Lord, that you loved us that much. Thank you, Lord, in Christ's name, amen. Do you have one? the first verse of page 132 all that will be glory you've seen this guy all over your social media feed he says you don't have to Ending verse this week is in Luke. Uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 37. And it says there, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, it, uh, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together. And runneth over shall men give unto your bosom, for with the same measure that ye meter with all, it shall be measured to you again. Thank you, and have a great week.